Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, and in this video, we are going to be looking at a more complex game loop than in our previous video. So we're going to be taking some of the things that we've learned in the past videos, and we're going to kind of put a lot of it together. What I'm starting with is the code from the second text input video. Uh, we looked at that, and we saw how when we held down the button, we were able to get the square to continue moving but it was very jerky, it was very unresponsive. I'm going to go ahead and run that now so you can kind of remember where we were at. First and foremost, you'll notice that nothing is being drawn to the screen currently. Uh, it's just a blank box because the system is still waiting for some form of input. So right off the bat, we're noticing it's kind of, you know, it's kind of unresponsive. It's not really doing what we want. The second I hit a key, now we've got our square uh, because it rendered for the first time. And when I hold a button, it kind of jerks like that, and then delays, and then moves. And even the movement's not all that smooth. Um, so that's what we're going to look at, at fixing here in this video. So like I said, we have all of the code from the uh, text input part 2 video, and we are just going to be making modifications to that. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create our timer. So type Allegro Timer. And we'll get that added in. Alright, then we're going to want to create our variable for our frames per second. Set equal to 60. There we go. And then we'll come on down here and we're going to create our timer. And our timer is going to be 1.0 for one second, divided by FPS, so one sixtieth of a second. Great. All right. And then we are going to add a few uh, inputs or a few uh, event sources here. Currently, we have our keyboard and our display. We're going to add our timer. see before uses the function al get timer event source and we're passing a timer so now timer is registered and is capable of creating or, or launching events and then I'm just going to go ahead and start my timer perfect okay so we've created our timer our timer is going to fire off every 1 60th of a second um, right now it's not doing anything uh, but is firing and we will actually catch that event uh, and we can see without modifying any of our game loop code we can see this in effect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this here and you will see I haven't pressed any keys but we have our queue. Uh, before it was just a blank screen until I pressed something. So what's happening is right off the bat uh, we're catching the event here and even though we're not doing anything specifically with that event it's allowing us to process our rendering so uh, already we can see that it's beginning to to do something now what we want to do is we want to make sure our square is updated only every 60th of, of a second through our input so our keyboard inputs um, that will allow us to have a smooth movement of our queue and also keep my computer running the, the cube, the game, at the same speed as at your computer or anyone else's computer, no matter how new or old it is. Uh, we keep it isolated to 160th of a second, and then everyone has the exact same game experience. So right here, after I do else if uh, the Allegro event display closed, I'm going to create another one. I'm going to do else, uh, can't type tonight, else if ev.type equals Allegro event timer. All right, so that will fire off every time our timer says, hey, it's, it's time. And we're going to take this code here. We're going to put it up inside there. So now we will only be updating our cube every 60th of a second. All right, go ahead and run this here. Now look at our, our input. See how much smoother that is? 
not only does it not jerk initially when I hit the, the button down, it's smooth in its transition all the way around. It's moving smoothly. I don't know with the resolution of the video I'm recording here, but before it kind of sped up and slowed down even as it was traversing the screen. And now it doesn't do that. Now it's only updating every 60 of a second, so it's consistent no matter how fast or slow my computer is at any given moment. So great. Okay, so my, my inputs are much more accurate now. One more thing we definitely want to look at is we want to look at how often we're rendering. Rendering can take a lot of processing time, uh, and that's processing time we could be using for other elements for our game. So if our game is only updating every 60th of a second, it's probably a good idea to only draw to the screen every 60th of a second which is much more than we actually need. It takes approximately 15 frames per second to convince the human eye that you're seeing motion. So when you get up into 60, you're really, you're really providing some very smooth animation anyway. So anything above that is really superfluous. Um, I believe the absolute limit to human vision is 100 frames per second, but uh, uh, no one's really going to notice otherwise. So what I want to do is I want to create another variable. Uh, I have my bool done. I'm going to create another bool here. And I'm going to call it redraw. And I'm going to, actually I'm going to call that true. Redraw equals true. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we are only going to draw uh, the, the square on the screen when two things are, are true. When it's time to redraw and one other thing we'll look at here in a second. So I'm going to say if redraw, we're just going to stop there for now. If redraw, there we go. Uh, so if it's time to redraw, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, now it's no longer time to redraw. And then I'm going to draw it to the screen. And that saves us from having a whole bunch of rendering cycles that we otherwise wouldn't need. Now up inside here, up inside the timer, to make sure we are drawing every 60th of a second, I'm going to do redraw equals true. Perfect. Okay. So that means that this can only draw every 60th of a second, keeping us at 60 frames per second, both for updating and for rendering, and everything is, is, is tightly timed then. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well if I'm doing this every 60th of a second, and I'm doing this every 60th of a second, why not just take this code? and move it up here. Move it up inside the event handler. And you would be correct. That would be a possible way of doing this. That comes with two limitations. First, uh, inside events, uh, event handlers, uh, you really want to keep the code as short and concise as possible. You really don't want event handlers taking up a whole lot of time or system resources. And you will learn that rendering is actually one of the more if not the most intensive thing any video game does actually rendering to the screen. So it, it's, a, it's a poor uh, design process to move that code into the event handler because it can really bog down your event handling system. The second reason is because not only do you not want to draw too often, you don't want to draw while other things are waiting to be processed. Um, for instance, if you're doing some you know, real fast keyboard work or mouse controller or joystick or whatever or or there's flags coming in from the, from the base system like the, the, the PC is sending uh, signals or information in your game you don't want to make that information wait while you're rendering. If I'm rendering at 60 frames per second and it drops down to 58 because it was just having me a little bit extra information to process during this you know particular cycle the player is not going to notice. Okay. However, if you're rendering at 60 frames per second consistently, but important data or important uh, inputs to your system are being delayed, that's a lot more noticeable. So what we want to do is we want to modify this to say not only uh, only draw it every uh, 60th of a second, but also. So I'm going to use and because this has to be true as well. Al is event queue empty. And I'll pass an event queue. What this does is it means I can only draw to the screen if there are no other events waiting to be processed. 
And that is why we don't put it up inside the event handler there. Because rendering, while important, uh, takes a back seat to the various inputs and events that your game will raise. Because like I said, a loss of one or two frames per second uh, is going to go completely unnoticeable. So I'm going to go ahead and run this here. Now you're not visually going to see any difference, but the game is now only rendering 60 frames per second. So now what we have is a game loop that has inputs and is timed to be exactly 60 frames per second um, and it is a much more tightly controlled um, and versatile piece of software. Now in our next uh, series of videos we're going to take this a step further and we're going to actually look at our first game. Uh, which kind of pulls together all these other things that we've learned.